Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to this series on uh, COVID-19 updated for March 2021. Uh, this is the uh, fourth video, I believe, in the series where we're going to talk about tests. And there's a really important thing which gets missed when we're talking about tests. A lot of you will be having tests at the moment or will have had tests. Certainly in our school, we're doing an awful lot of the lateral flow tests at the moment to make sure the students are ready to come back to school. And there's a lot of talk about well, what use are they? Are they specific enough? Are they accurate enough? Are they any good anyway? All this kind of stuff. And the answer to those questions are not as simple as they're being portrayed to you in a lot of cases. And I'm going to try and explain a little bit of the nuance of what are we actually asking with these different tests. You might remember in a previous video I said scientists tend to work by getting very specific confident answers to very, very specific questions. And if you deviate from that question at all into sort of decision making and policy, well, that moves away from the questions that the scientists are answering. OK, I'm actually going to show you some of the kit involved with some of the testing. And because I have been doing lateral testing myself, we're going to end this video with uh, me showing you how a real test is done in full PPE within a lateral flow testing uh, laboratory. OK, so that's basically what we're going to do today. So um, let's start with the first one, PCR. Now, this is the one you might have had in all the drive-in centres if you uh, go and it's the one where they take a, a day or so to get the result back to you, maybe a few days, depending on where you are in the country, because most of the, the delay is actually uh, transport and processing and getting the information back to you rather than actually doing the test. So the PCR test or polymerase chain reaction, as it's called, right, is basically DNA or in this case RNA because uh, COVID is an RNA virus, photocopying, right? It's literally just copying, copying, copying bits of DNA. So the question that PCR is actually answering, right? When you do a PCR test, this is what is actually being answered is, is there any COVID RNA on this swab? So the swab that's gone in the person up the nose, you know, all the drill, I'll show you all that in a moment, right? Is there actually this specific nucleic acid sequence, is this specific sequence of bases on this swab or not? OK, that is the very precise question that it's answer, uh, that's asking. Now, the questions that that doesn't answer are, am I infectious? Right, because that uh, DNA could have been, that RNA could have been picked up when you'd already got rid of the infection. Right, and you've basically got a few residual particles of the virus left there. OK, so it doesn't answer the question, am I infectious? Obviously, the decision that's been made, which is a sensible one, is to treat everybody who tests positive for the presence of this RNA as potentially infectious. And so they're told to isolate. And that is a sensible decision. OK, have I had COVID? This has nothing to do with you having or not had COVID. Right? It's nothing to do with your immunity to COVID. It's merely is a particle of the virus there. And it's unbelievably sensitive. It can be as little as one uh, particle. And I'll try and explain why in a moment, why it's so sensitive. Am I getting COVID? Similarly, you could be on the other end of the infection. You could have a COVID particle there, but it's actually just not going to infect you or it's already dead or it's not going to get into your lungs and start replicating or something like that. OK, so we need to be super, super careful as well that we do not mix up. I've had a negative test result from a PCR test with I can go to the pub or hug granny. Right. Because they're not the same thing. OK, all it says is at that moment, is there any COVID RNA on this swab? Now, their sensitivity is incredibly high. Their specificity is incredibly high. Does it tell you if you're infectious? No. Does it tell you if, you've, if you're immune? No. OK, so those decisions that are being made um, by people basing sort of their decisions about their behaviour on, um, on a negative PCR test might want to bear that in mind. OK, so let me show you a little bit. I'm not going to go into all the biochemistry about PCR. If you're interested and you're an A-level student or you're just, uh, you know, intellectually curious, there are videos specifically on PCR on this channel that you can go and have a look and go through all the ins and outs up to a top end A-level standard sort of beginning of degree standard. OK, so you can go and look at those. But basically what it is, is it's a DNA photocopier and that's a heat cycler. Right? It's a PCR machine, quite an old school one. And all it is is a box that gets hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. That's all it does. Right. If you look inside it at the racks, there are all your tubes. OK, and those tubes, 
will have a blend of different enzymes in them, these little things called primers that are like bookends that mark out where this specific bit of RNA we're looking for, the COVID specific sequence is, okay, that if the COVID is there, they will bind onto that RNA. If the COVID isn't, then they won't. Okay, so there's those in there and all the machine does is get hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold. And every cycle, every hot cold cycle that you get, you get amplification. So if that original uh, RNA molecule is there, one molecule to start with, after the first generation, you'll have two. And then the second generation, you'll have four and then eight and then 16, and it's exponential growth. So you put this through of 10 cycles and you've got a really, really, really large amount of RNA, which is why from one tiny little COVID virus particle, you can, or one copy of that RNA, you can get a very strong positive result. So the sensitivity is incredibly high. If I show you that in a diagram, this is basically what happens. To start with, you put your original standard DNA in here, and in this test, that original DNA we can replace for COVID viral RNA that's either there or it's not. You heat it up to separate some strands, but obviously if it's single strands, you don't need to do that. Primers go in, they bind on here, as you can see, so these are little bookends. If this original sequence, this very specific sequence, isn't there, then this step won't happen. Okay, heat up to 72 and a very special enzyme called DNA polymerase manufactures, or in this case RNA polymerase, manufactures copies of um, your particular nucleic acid. And then you go round and round and round again. Okay, so this amplification process happens if that very specific sequence of bases was on your original swab. If it wasn't there, then it won't happen and you'll get a negative result. OK, and that's what PCR is. If you want to know more, I know it's a very quick run through. If you want to know more, have a look at the polymerase chain reaction videos in the Biotech Basics playlist on this channel. OK, so that's what PCR does. It's biochemical, right? It's uh, some biochemical photocopying. It's like a molecular biology way looking at the nucleic acids, looking at the code, right? Lateral flow is actually looking at these antigens and antibodies. It's using immunology. Right? It's using a sort of harnessed version of the immune system. So what it's doing is exactly the same chemistry as a pregnancy test. Now, if you've done GCSE recently or A-level, maybe slightly less recently, um, even you will know what a monoclonal antibody is and how pregnancy tests work. OK, if you don't, again, there's other videos on the uh, on the channel to look at. But it uses antibodies to detect the COVID antigens. OK, the question this test is asking is, is there enough COVID antigen on this swab to glue two sets of antibodies together, one of which is stuck to the stick and one of which has got a, an enzyme that makes a colour on the top to make a coloured band, just like on a pregnancy test, okay? So that is what you're looking for. That's the question it's asking. Now, there's lots of reasons why you might not have enough of those antigens there to do that reaction. The one we hope for is you don't have COVID. That's the one we hope for, okay? But it might be that you just, you're coming into the infection, so you don't have quite enough yet, right? And you may then leave the test center going, brilliant, I'm negative, and then may become positive in the next few days, which is why in schools we're doing repeated testing over a number of weeks. That's why it's three tests within the school, I believe, and then some more at home that you can do yourself, okay? Or whatever the guidance happens to be when you're watching this video. Um, so that's the question it is asking. The other thing that might happen is that you might not have enough swab. You might have the COVID uh, virus in there. You might not have swabbed well enough. There might be user error, okay? Which again is why we're encouraging all our students to do it within school first so they get the hang of it before they're then allowed to go and do it in the community to increase the accuracy. And there's been lots of studies on the accuracy, the sensitivity, the specificity of this. And of course it is lower than PCR, but it's, it's actually triggered to pick up a much higher um, less, sort of level of COVID, right? Which you could argue is a good thing, that it's not going to give you false positives in the same way as PCR might, okay? The questions it doesn't ask, okay, and this again is it's often confused with, is am I infected? Well, as I said, you could be on the way into an infection. You could be on the way out of an infection. It could pick up dead uh, virus particles when you've already got an immune response going on. Okay, so it doesn't answer that question directly. Have I recently had COVID? Well, if you've recently had COVID and the antibodies in your system have taken out the virus, well, then you won't get a positive result. You'll get a negative, but that doesn't tell you whether you've had it or not. It could be that you've never been exposed. Okay, will I develop symptoms in the near future? Doesn't answer that question because, of course, 
you could have an initial infection, just not enough to create a positive on these particular tests, okay? Can I go to the pub and hug granny, of course, is not a question that any scientific test can answer directly, okay? So hopefully that's clear of what these different things mean. I found this graph, the reference for which is down here, if you want to go and look at this paper, all right? It is a fantastic, uh, fantastic paper you can go and look at there, um, where you can see uh, this sort of research into lateral flow testing, detectable antibody levels, and so on and so forth. And I really like this. I was going to draw a graph like this, but I found somebody else, of course, has already done it for me. Um, so initially, as I've said, way over here, look, in the incubation period, right, you can actually see right down here, we've got our antibody detectable levels up there. And yes, the COVID is in your system, but it's not at a detectable level yet, okay, up until day five. So the test couldn't detect that, right? Then you come into the infectious period, look, where we do get detection happening, so that's fine. But these things, IgA, IgG, and IgM are all antibodies, right? They're all your own body's antibodies, and they're being manufactured to fight off the COVID. So as they rise up, right, it actually starts taking the COVID out. So after this point down here, day 16, you've still got some COVID, which means you could possibly pass that along to somebody else, infect somebody else, but you wouldn't test positive on a lateral flow test, which again is why this repetition is really important. So big advantage, it's not going to give you, you know, one COVID particle and you get a positive result. That's good, right? That's but also it may miss some, which is why we're doing them repeatedly and we're making people do them with trained professionals or people who have the training before they then take them home, okay? And that's what lateral flow testing is doing. So I can actually now, through the miracle of my second camera here, show you some of these things, okay? So these are some of the pieces of equipment that I've been using in lateral flow testing. Initially here, look, this is the swab, okay? This is the swab. Down at uh, this end here, we've got all the fluffy bits. Okay, that's that there. Uh, down there is what you stick down your throat, and this end is where you open it. Now, this bit can be a bit fiddly, so if I'm feeling kind, I always fold this back for the students before I get to them, right? And they handle that end. Okay, that's the end we want the student touching. Okay, they then withdraw the swab, and of course, this one is now not going to be used for anything else, and that fluffy end goes down the throat, okay, so it goes down the throat like that, not to the point where they're, you know, in, it's in their lungs, it doesn't need to be that far, but over the teeth and over the tongue, don't touch those, onto the tonsils at the back, 10 seconds on one side, rubby rub rub, 10 seconds on the other side, rubby rub rub, taking that out, taking it and putting it into the nostril, and again, we're pushing it back into the nostril by a few centimetres, but not so many that it hurts, of course, and we're not looking for people to cause themselves nosebleeds, and so on and so forth, okay? It's, uh, and that comes out, and that's where we get to this little bit of equipment here, okay? Now this is the testing tube. Into that, someone like me will already have put six drops of the uh, lateral flow testing fluid, it will have the first set of antibodies in it and some other chemicals to help break and separate out the, um, the particles, okay? So that'll have six drops of liquid in the bottom there and our swab, right, the student or patient will just place that in the tube and they would hand that back to me, okay? And what I would do is I would take that, I would squeeze, 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 for 10 seconds like that, squeezing, 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 and pull that out to make sure I get all the human juice off and into this tube, okay? The, the swab, then that goes into our clinical waste, and that's, de that's dealt with, right? So I'm gonna put that to one side for a moment and then show you the actual test, okay? Now this is one of the tests we're using, okay? Now I'll open this up. Here it is. As you can see, Right, it has on it, ooh, there we are, uh, the area where you would then drop two right, of our two drops from our dropping tube. Okay, there it is. So you do two drops from here. As you'll notice, this tube's got a little nib on the top, right, like that. And you take that and you go drip, drip, one, two. The worst is when they're sticky. Right, I hate that, right? Because you're supposed to do two drips, and some people have been very keen, comes out in a little string. So you've got to be a bit careful about that if you're, if you're actually operating these. You'll then immediately see that it starts to move by capillary action, like if you've put your trouser leg in a puddle on a wet day, up from here, soaks up through into this window here. And you've got test, 
and control, just like a pregnancy test, as I say, right? That, that window there, there's a little band of antibodies right, that are stuck and they are going to stick to any COVID particles that are there. But the liquid already had an antibody in it with an enzyme on the end that will also stick to the COVID, anti, uh, the COVID uh, antigen. So basically the COVID antigen, if it's there, will glue together these two forms of antibody. One that's stuck to the, to the stick and one that makes a colour. And you'll get a coloured band there if you've got, and that's an indication of a positive. You've then got this window here, the control window, which has got another antibody, yet a different type, that sticks to the original antibody. Which basically just says, yep, liquid made it all the way up here. So you can be sure that liquid made it all the way up the test from the window down there up to the control and made a band. Okay, And if, that, if it went past the test window and didn't make a band, that's a negative test because there's no COVID antigen in there to glue those things together. Okay, so that is basically, and that takes about half an hour. Okay, so that's basically how these um, how these tests work. They're quite quick. They're easy to do. You can be trained up to do them if you've got some lab experience, right? Some biological experience like myself. You can be trained up to do them quite quickly and quite easily, and that's why they're being used. Okay, so those are the questions that we are actually asking um, of our tests. Okay. So I'm going to turn that camera off now and I'm now going to show you a genuine test being done in our testing centre. Right, this was done earlier this week so you can see how this would look in, in reality. Obviously you've got to do it in full PPE, make sure all health and safety is, is dealt with. Okay, and thank you very much to my colleague Mr Reeves for filming, uh, for filming this. Okay, so next up we'll have a look at vaccines. So thanks very much and I hope to see you then and I'll leave you with our testing centre. Right. Yeah. Okay so here we are doing lateral flow testing as you can see it's it's all go go go. The, the person's just done their test so in that mixture there look that's the extraction solution and their sample so I'm basically trying to squeeze off as much of the person juice which may or may not have the virus particles on it as possible. I do that for 10 seconds. I then pull that out, I draw that, and that's my sample. That goes in the clinical waste bin. Now I close the lid so we can see the solution here. Now this is the lateral flow test itself. I'm going to put two drops on here, and what we get, one, two, is we now get a mixture of antibodies a mixture of antibodies and enzyme moving up the test and hopefully you should be able to start to see it there it goes turning purple as the liquid soaks through now if the covid antigens have attached to the antibodies they will stick to some fixed antibodies here in the test window and they'll give us a band this will take about half an hour to happen the control window just shows us that the liquid actually made it all the way up to the top because there's another set of fixed antibodies up there to which our antibodies themselves that were in the solution will stick whether there's COVID or not. So that just tells us that it did make it through and if there's no band here then what we've actually got is a negative test. So the last step I do is I put a time on which is 1507 and I hand it over to our lovely timers. So there we go, real world application of antibodies and immunology.